Welcome to Made in Wall, our new show here on Scripps News. I'm Chris Wynn. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Chris Stewart. We're joining you live from Atlanta. And we're talking about autonomous this half hour, also known as driverless. Those vehicles could be the future of transportation, but the big question how soon will it take? A recent study found that self-driving cars are safer than human drivers. Human drivers are involved in more crashes than driverless vehicles, according to a study from by researchers from the University of Michigan, Virginia Tech, and General Motors. The study also found that humans cause crashes and injure others more often than autonomous vehicles. Authors of the report concluded that self-driving cars can reduce the 40,000 40, deadly crashes that happen every year. Adam Kavakovic joins us now. He's the founder and CEO of Chamber of Progress. It's a progressive tech industry policy coalition. Uh, he's a tech industry expert with more than 20 years of experience. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, all right, so driverless cars are far from the norm, yet cities like Phoenix and San Francisco currently allow them in some form. Uh, what more can you tell us about how well they're working right now in the cities that they're able to operate in? Well, it's interesting. I was at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas last week, and now there's a whole section of that show devoted to autonomous vehicles. And they really, they're not really even just the future because they're the present. They're here now. They're operating in Phoenix. They've been operating uh, safely in Phoenix and now across San Francisco. And there was recent data um, showing that they're extremely popular in just the four months or so that autonomous vehicles have been fully available to the public in San Francisco. The number of rides is just off the charts. So the public residents and visitors in places like San Francisco are, are really curious and excited about autonomous vehicles. And so I think there's a gap because I think when, you know, when politicians think about this kind of thing, it's new, it's a little unknown. Obviously you know, there's going to be some people who worry about it and some people who complain about it, but what I've observed, and this has been my own experience riding in an autonomous vehicle, once you do it, it becomes kind of ordinary, almost boring after a period of time. And you sort of think, well, gosh, what was the fuss about this? And I, I think over the coming year, we're going to see these vehicles reach more and more cities. And I think that will be the public's reaction um, to a lot, of, uh, a lot of their hands-on experience with autonomous vehicles. Yeah, where are we in the advancement of driverless technology? How much further do we have to go? How long would it take to get there? Well, I think we're much further along than people realize. The leading companies in this space, Waymo, Cruise, Dukes, they have driven them millions of miles in Phoenix, San Francisco, and in other markets. And what people, I think, don't fully realize is that every one of those miles for an autonomous vehicle is a learning experience. So they're learning along the way how to handle situations. And so when one vehicle sees um, something happen, it might be the first time they've ever seen it, but they learn how to react. And then that can then get added back into the programming of the software. And let's face it, humans are just not like that. Um, an autonomous vehicle cannot drive distracted. It cannot drive drunk. And we see increasingly these are the, those two reasons are the biggest factors in a lot of uh, in a lot of human caused accidents, and so I think just when people start start thinking about it, it's like this is a this is a form of transportation that actually gets smarter the more that it drives and the more that it has this experience of being on the road, and it really just has humans beat um, in terms of uh, the safety factor uh, in a way that really can't be denied the longer that these uh, these driverless cars sort of are on the roads. And to your point about popularity, I was just in San Francisco not too long ago. I signed up for uh, for Waymo, trying to you know get access, and could not get off that wait list until about two months later. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer. I wanted to give it a try, but everywhere I looked, they were all over the place, and each of them were filled with people giving it a shot. Um, with that said, we know the data shows that driverless cars are safer than humans behind the wheel, but if you could talk a little bit about the barriers to entry and why they aren't more prevalent right now. Sure. That's largely because we have a regulatory system in our country now that gives states largely the ability to authorize whether autonomous vehicles can operate in their state. And even still, it's on an operator-by-operator -operator basis, and so in California, the state has given permission to Cruise and Waymo and other companies to operate. Phoenix has done the same thing for both companies. Texas has done this. But if you look at other states, New York, Washington State, Illinois, some of the big states, they haven't given permission. And as a result, they're really lagging behind. And so I do think that what's going to happen, I think, over the coming years is you're going to see a little bit of a kind of a haves and have not states in terms of autonomous vehicles. Some states are going to really leap to the forefront 
um, for this experience. And I think really, you know, again, fear, I understand it. It's a, it's a new thing. The I, the concept scares people. Some people think it's less safe. And I think it's what was one of the things about this really groundbreaking study that Cornell just did because they looked at places like Phoenix where Waymo has been operating for a year plus and they can compare um, the, the safety rate of the autonomous vehicle to humans and found that 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 essentially the autonomous vehicles are 85 percent safer so i think that that more of that data becomes uh, available i think that will largely uh, chip away at some of the fear that pol some policymakers and some of the public has about autonomous vehicles yeah it'll be interesting as time goes on just uh, how prevalent they become on the roads in, in many parts of this country adam kavakovich ceo of chamber of progress thanks for your time we appreciate it thank you